Hey, it's the podcast guy. Sutton United Talk Time on podcast. It's the Sutton Podcast. And there it is. Sutton United at the GM Vauxhall Conference have put down first division Coventry City. Winners of the FA Cup themselves less than two years ago. And what a moment to enjoy for the fans of this Surrey side. They've had their moments before, but never one like this. But the whistle goes down. You like the Sun United. Sutton United of the National League are through to the last 16 of the FA Cup. No longer English football's perennial non-league club. A 123-year crescendo reaches a new peak for Sutton United, who are promoted to the Football League for the first time. Hello and welcome to another episode of Sutton United Talk Time on Podcast, the Sutton Podcast. I'm your host Mike and joining me today's panel we have Chris, Paul and Joe. We're going to be talking about the Stevenage match and look forward to the Hartlepool game next Saturday. Um, don't forget you can help with costs to the show and one-off donations or regular subscriptions by joining us on Patreon. Um, there's more information on the website which is uh, suttonpodcast.com. The Danny Bolt interview will be up on there this uh, week at some point when I finish um, a little bit of tidying up. Um, thank you for joining us. And it's um, I've just had an email about 10 minutes ago, the 193rd most popular podcast in the UK charts for some reason. Although the slight payoff to that is we did drop down to 191 in the Ukraine. So very much congratulations to whoever's just started a podcast in Ukraine because we've been 124 weeks. Um, no idea why or how. Um, <laughs> really looking forward to um, talking to the panel, finding out what's going on with them. Um, we'll start off with Chris. Last time we spoke was um, after the Crawley match on Boxing Day. So yes. how have you been since? Um, I, 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 have, I have been all right. I have been fine. Uh, and uh, so when I, yeah, but also just to allude to um, future things, uh, I was Jenny for the Crawley game, making my uh, debut. And yesterday I made my home debut as Jenny. So Very Jenny good. Giraffe, so. <laughs> Very good. This is, I think, possibly a coincidence because we, we book these in a little while in advance. Oh, yeah. Or, or, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a coincidence. Or do you go and say, right, I've got to be Jenny on this day. Um, no, no. <laughs> lovely. Um, so next up, we have Joe. And Joe, what have you been like up to last time we had a, well, I think for all of us, it was a win against Gillingham. But for you, I think it was technically a draw because you scoped off early. <laughs> oh, something's happened with Joe's microphone. Oh, he's talking. Oh, there we go. No, you're gone again. <laughs> God. Okay. While we sort that out, um, Paul, we'll come to you. Um, it was a very cold Colchester the last time we spoke. Um, <laughs> have you thawed out and how have things since? <laughs> good, Mike. Yeah, good. Yeah. I, uh, we went to last football matters was, uh, we went, um, I took my son to Fulham for ground up last week. Um, so we went, that was the first time we'd both been there. 39 shots was the, uh, in the game, which was extraordinary. Yeah, and there was no goal. <laughs> uh, two goals, yeah. <coughs> oh, was there two goals for us, sorry. <laughs> um, so Joe. Is can you hear me? Right? Can you hear me now? Am I back? We can hear you now. Brilliant. Um, so yeah, um, don't remind me of the Gillingham match because obviously I'm still very upset about that. <laughs> um, yeah, I've just been busy. I've got a lot of exams. So I was going to hopefully get up to Harrogate last weekend, but um, it didn't quite materialise. So Steve was my first match since Wimbledon, which was nice to go to. Um, but yeah, been a relatively yeah. quiet month to be fair. Good stuff. Good stuff. Okay, so a couple of quick bits. Um before we kind of get into it. So the ladies team is a bit odd today. Um, they were there at the match. Ahmed was there on comms and uh, the referee decided that there was um, something he didn't like. <sighs> Slightly different reports, a bit of metal sticking out near one of the goals or a concrete block. I'm not 100% sure which, um, but possibly like an old goalpost that's become more exposed as the rank weather recently. Um, but obviously you can't play with that because... Lots of the players were apparently saying they wanted to just carry on, but it's like, yeah, you won't feel like that if you slide over that or, or go over that. That's, that's, that. That can't be played on. So um, we look to see what happens there, whether it gets rearranged or um, pitch isn't suitable. So do we get the points? Um, I love an admin win as well. Um, so there's also, don't forget, you can sign up to the very exciting Sutton postcard. Um, first, first edition went out. Um, it was 
brilliant. Uh, it's not. Um, and the only other real thing is, um, again, something I think is great that the club's involved in. Um, I don't think it's so great that it has to happen. So mixed mixed thoughts. And I'm actually going to jump back to yourself, Chris, because you had a bit to yeah. do with this today. So there was the community fridge thing. So there mm. is um, just opposite Gander Green Lane, uh, opposite the stadium, um, so I can have a little community fridge. It's essentially for like food waste and anyone who kind of is a bit short, which this is the bit that I don't think should be happening, but it is happening. So it's good that we're doing something with it. And it kind of dovetails almost the um, coffee mornings we've been doing. But Chris was a very busy boy yesterday. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, was, was, um, he was litter picking. He was taking yeah. the... I was surprised the Wimbledon fans didn't give us a bit of stick for the old Womble business, but... Um, Tell us about your, your your morning first of all, Chris. Uh, yeah, so um, so my morning was uh, was was litter picking uh, in uh, Collingwood Rec, uh, and so there were some uh, with, with help uh, from the local police, uh, which was unexpected, uh, and uh, and also um, befriending um, some local local kids of varying ages. Uh, it was you know, a, a great success. Uh, at one point, I did feel a bit like the Pied Piper of Hamelin. Um, <laughs> so it was, it was quite lovely. Um, and yeah, so, so, so did some good work there. And then uh, went, then kind of got back um, to the ground, had a bit of um, decapitation rest period, because uh, there is no frame in the Jenny Giraffe costume, the neck is just literally resting on your shoulders. Uh, so <laughs> it's a bit tiring. Uh, and then I went to uh, go and uh, meet uh, our our ball kids uh, from Nonsuch Primary, I think, and uh, and also as well hang out with some of the players uh, who were talking about cricket more than I would expect. Uh, so particularly, I think, with John Barden seemed to be leading the cricket talk. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, so I, I, I was trying to figure out what match it was that they were talking about. Um, but uh, anyway, maybe they were all playing each other on, on a PS4 <laughs> cricket thing. Uh, so uh, And uh, then just doing meet and greet uh, with the fans, wandering around the ground, um, causing um, a little bit of chaos, um, <laughs> but all very good natured. Uh, and uh, my um, my assistant reckoned that 25% of the stickers he handed out were to fully grown adults who were making no sort of like attempt to sort of say, oh, I'm taking this for my kids. Like, <laughs> no, 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 we want that. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it, yeah, it, it was yeah, great. And then, um, then, then I got into my suit to be the tunnel steward. Uh, and then post-match, uh, went to do the, um, to, to meet the, um, the community fridge people. Uh, so uh, just on the community fridge uh, so they are open Mondays 8am to 10am Wednesday 2 to 4pm and Saturdays 12 to 2 on a non-match day and 12 to 6 on a match day uh, so uh, yeah and they, they are they're lovely people and yesterday was their opening day so uh, so so Jenny Jenny didn't cut any kind of like ribbons or anything uh, <laughs> but uh, but yes, it was, uh, so it was, it was good. And uh, yeah, and you were saying it's oppos opposite the ground. It's kind of, it's the same block as the artist formerly known as the plow. Um, right. But it's kind of like, Just... it's right next to the corner shop on the other corner of that block. Perfect. Uh, but uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, so um, lovely folks uh, and doing good work. And uh, they will quite happily take a donation off you um, uh, in exchange for cake and various other things. So uh, yeah. Excellent. And remembered all of that, even though you sent me in a message just in case you forgot. So very yes. well done. Very well done. You remembered the whole lot. So. Right. We're going to dive in to, um, had a bit more of a talking point than I, I actually was prepared for. So we're going to go into the the ultimate team. So again, just to clarify the rules, this is your favourite player. It's not you saying this is the best player in all time. This is your favourite player. And it can be for any reason you like. So um, it, it's 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 just a bit of a, we'll have a little of a fun team. I, I I spent a long time explaining it last week, and then they've done exactly the, the thing that I was giving as an example. So I've got to get straight into it, and um, we'll we'll come back in a second. We'll start with you, Joe, to so get your get your, your notes ready. And now, one hundred and twenty-five. 
five years in the making. The Sutton United Talk Time on Podcast. Sutton United All Time Ultimate Eleven. So, Joe, who's your choice for right back? Right back. Okay. So I've only I've only been a supporter for a year. So I've got a very limited pool of three players. So I'm going to just, because of the wonderful recovery he has had from such a horrific injury, I'm going to go for John Barden because he, Ooh. I've got his autograph. And he was the first player's autograph I've got. Um, so that's my very, I feel like I've not done the, the wonderful intro you gave me to justice because I don't have much reasoning other than that. I've got a better one for centre back, but like right back. Yeah, that's, that's what I've got. That, that's as good as any reason. Um, did actually going to talk about John in a minute, actually. Um, but uh, Paul, we'll come to you next for your right back. Uh, so I've got a little bit longer to choose from in six, six or seven seasons, six, seven years, I think. Although I did see them before that off and on for the last 30 years or so. But um, I'm going for the six years. And uh, in the spirit of something uh, just a, 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 a little bit that uh, different or something like that, I've gone for Enzio. Um, who uh, um, simply because uh, what an extraordinary job he's uh, done this year, playing out of his position. And I think it sums up the the team really a little bit, you know, mucking in for the team, getting stuck in, as I understand it, you know, not too much noise. He could have made a right old noise about having to play that role, wouldn't he? But And he's also played it pretty well. <laughs> so uh, yeah. I've, gone, uh, I've gone for Enzio, who probably isn't our greatest uh, right back of all time, but... Uh, but in the spirit of the, uh, in the of the game, I'm I'm sticking him down. <laughs> the choice that you the choice that you've got today. If I chose, if I this is the other thing. If I ask someone tomorrow, it could be something completely different. This is why this is such a weird little thing. Well, let's hope so. Chris, I mean, we don't want him stuck there, do we? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's a good point, Chris. So uh, I've also gone for someone who occasionally plays played out of position. When he uh, when he played for us, uh, uh, also as well, uh, he was right back for the very first match I went to. Uh, Simon Downer, okay, uh, who uh, was a stand-in goalkeeper. Uh, so not long after we played Arsenal in the FA Cup. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, and uh, yeah, so, and Simon, I got to know a bit from tunnel stuff um and absolutely lovely uh, so uh, yeah it was um, perfect yeah, yeah. excellent Just personal reasons so we, we don't even need to go on to our second choices so that's beautiful um so the center back choices okay so joe um right so the, i i've mentioned this on the podcast before but like i'm gonna go over it again for the for the way i got into Sutton was doing a career mode on fifa with them um so and I kept one player throughout the twelve seasons I was like do, uh, managing them, and that was Louis John. Uh, he captained every single match he could, apart from when he was injured or suspended due to my incompetencies at tackling. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna go for him. I also he's 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 my um, he's my mum's favourite player as well, uh, purely for the fact that he moved against Newport on the opening on the on the opening day he was very kind to her and took a photo so that the, the, this one's for all the fifa lovers and for my for my mother so yes i'll go for i'll go for louis john right i am going to get grief that you've chosen a player because of fifa but no it's fine it's no problem joe don't worry <laughs> and paul who, who are you going for oh small print mike have i got two guesses or t- uh, choices or one just give me one first of all. Oh, okay. And yeah. If, if we double up, if everyone's chosen Louis, then uh, we, we may need second. Oh, okay. Uh, so, um, I mean, it felt to me. So, I have gone performance-wise actually, and uh, it felt to me. I mean, this is admittedly haven't seen certain teams from bygone age, but uh, it feels like we're in a golden period of um, centre backs. So, uh, plenty to choose from, and uh, Louis would have been a great choice. But I have gone for. Uh, uh, Jamie Collins, as that was a, he was the first centre back. Me and my son, uh, uh, or first uh, one of centre backs who was in the team at that time, and actually, you know, captain and absolutely just just the epitome of someone you want your kids to be a hero of. You know, absolute club man. Um, I, I don't think I ever saw him um, lose a header in six years. I mean, it just the way he read the game and and such like. And I think I probably saw him at the end of his career as well. So I uh, yeah. so I can imagine he was a. Uh, Pretty useful 
um, when he was uh, a lot younger. Dominant, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And of course, uh, and the penalty taking, I mean, um, if there was ever a man yeah, you wanted to slot the ball home, then it was him, wasn't it? So, uh, so yeah. Uh, yeah. Club captain, uh, first guy, and uh, that he's penalty taken and just, just a terrific defender. So that's what we went for. That's what I've gone for. Perfect. And Chris? Right. Well, we have a slight issue here because uh, uh, my my first and second choices have gone. Uh, my first choice was, was Jamie Collins. Uh, so I've just had a bit of frantic looking at um, yeah, at who was playing for uh, for the very first game I saw, uh, and Google suggests it was um, it was Michael Spillane or Mickey, as I always used to call him. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, we'll go with that for random purposes. <laughs> oh my god, I'm going to get some messages. <laughs> Perfect. So what I'll do is I'll be sticking him out on the vote. On the vote, and I haven't thought this through very well because I just realised that the centre backs are going to get a second bite of the cherry because whoever's on next week are also choosing a centre back and a left back. Um, but there's um, two, cent- there's yeah, two centre backs goes the next week. Whoever yeah. goes next week, they, they, they can override my choice. Cause like, no, my choice. No, that, that will come up soon, but next week they just get a free hit. Uh, but at some point, someone's going to be coming in going, yeah, I'm getting rid of one of them. <laughs> but Perfect. Thank you very much, gents. Um, right. Super, super quickly for yesterday, because we, we have got Jack and Adam with us already. Um, the lineup yesterday, so a bit of a shocker with Louis being out, although he was... Walking around fine, he did say beforehand it was just a knock and he expects to be back next week. And I think Matt confirmed that in his interview. Um, he also confirmed that to Jenny de Giraffe. He did. Excellent. Good. <laughs> um, but the bigger shock was I, I, I did feel sorry for him after the third conversation I had with him. But um, I was there when John drove in and had a very quick chat while he was in his car. Then he was on the sidelines and young Ryan, Ryan's young Bruce wanted to have a little chat with him. So I took him over and he had a chat and had to explain about his injury then again. And then he came on the pitch very quickly while I was doing that silly thing in the dugout and had another chat. And I'm like, I wonder how many times he's going to have to explain how, how he's recovering this week. I did suggest we started a pool, but he, 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 didn't, he didn't want to play along. Uh, but amazing. The guy's up walking around without crutches. He was in the gym yesterday morning and drives himself around. Um, that is just astonishing recovery. Um, I suspect the fact that it was Stevenage made him absolutely want to be there. Um, but, um, yeah, just absolutely amazing. Um, but, yeah, what, 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 what did you think of the lineup? Not necessarily the guys who, who were out, but what, what were your thoughts? And, oh, Kobe also um, mm. back on the bench. Brilliant. Um, and Matt, uh, Matt um, Ridley, Ridley's walking around as well. So we're not pretty much coming back to full strength here. Um, but what, what did you think of the lineup as, as we... Uh, going into it, we a little bit of a shock. Louis been out, but as strong as you could expect. Yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for others to go because I never actually saw the lineup. All right, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Got a joke? Um, yeah, very happy. Um, does anyone know what happened to Josh? Because I, I I didn't see the interview. He had a knock in training, I think, and he's going to be at least a couple of weeks. Okay, okay. So that, that, yeah, I I was surprised yeah. to not see him on the bench because I didn't know. Uh, that he was injured, mm. uh, but yeah, very very good going forward. Uh, good to see Lee Angle on the bench. He made a good impact at Harrogate. Uh, yeah, I agree. You've come back to full strength. Thing is, the first time we came on the podcast, we had about half our squad in the injury room. So now it's nice to be able to that say there's so much opportunity. Um, I'm missing I'm missing Tope um, just because he was a lovely guy. Um, but And it's sad not to see him and Killian on the bench. But, you know, he's, he's ripped up at Torquay, so he's doing brilliantly. Um, so happy for him. And, yeah, just really happy with the, the squad we put out. Excellent, Paul? Yeah, I, I, I fancied our chances at this, before the game. And then you saw the line-up and you thought, oh, we've got to shuffle it out the back again. But, you know, we've got uh, the greatest right-back Sutton's ever had uh, in the team. So, uh, so that was handy. Uh, but um, uh, so I thought um, so I thought that might be a little bit of issue, but they cope really well, didn't they? And as you say, just just that little bit of beefing up of the bench uh, and with players back makes such a difference, doesn't it? You look at that team and and, and the way they play, um, it, um, it's um, it is virtually at full strength, isn't it? Yeah. So, but it wasn't. <laughs> I, I did a t-shirt design, one for the purists. I think I put on there. Um, <laughs> It wasn't the most exciting game. I think Steve Evans said, I don't think either keeper had to make a save. Um, That's not true. 
Um, well, that, this is what I think everyone was saying. It's, it's, it, it, yeah, it, 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 yeah. It, it he just seemed to be seeing a different match yeah. from other people. <laughs> he, often, he often does. Yes. Um, but it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't frills and spills. Um, I, I think I said after the game that wasn't the game I ever thought we were going to lose. But by the same token, I didn't think we were ever going to win it either. Um, I think we could have still been there now, and both teams would have been huffing and puffing a bit. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I I I had the feeling that something was going to happen in the last minute. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, uh, and I was kind of hoping that it wouldn't, uh, because like we had already uh, in the in the tunnel, we had already made a decision that we were going to kind of like go out and escort the ref off. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was also aware that I had to get into the mascot costume as quickly as possible. I was just thinking, can just just be over quickly and without <laughs> aggro. Uh, so uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you mentioned the ref. He was he was subject to lots of conversation. Um... Now I thought he did okay because I think because like he was letting it flow. He possibly let it flow a little bit too much in places, but I. I I kind of I felt that he gave sort of like equal to both sides from what I saw. It was, it was uh, a, it, so a really by everyone else. It was a really chippy game, wasn't it? I mean, is it twenty four fouls? So I think that's quite difficult. And and it's whether well was it difficult because he didn't get that consistency right earlier on, or was it just a really difficult game to handle? I, I'm on the latter side. I don't think he, I don't think he had a particularly um, uh, terrible game particularly. Um, but uh, you know, both sides very physical. And uh, it was, um, you know, and it, it, it was always going to be a difficult one to manage. I think. Mm-hmm. I think it's a big point. A big point. Obviously, it's a big point for us because that's a, it's a game going into it that you think, oh God. But I think Stevenage. Um, I was just thinking they're a little bit like us last season. They're so good at home. We've seen that in the FA Cup, the way they came back. We've seen that in the league. They haven't lost in the the league since the twenty second of October or something ridiculous. But. I was. Yeah. I've just been looking at the results away. So many away draws, and just not getting getting those goals. And it's just you know, the ref. I agree. It didn't n- nothing much wrong. Our, our, my only complaint is that we didn't make use of our free kicks enough. Like sometimes just not putting them in the right areas. But like I didn't think there was much wrong. Some subject words from many people, but you know. It's, it, it's kind of obviously depends on your point of view if if it's going your way and you're not going to complain but if it's if the agile boys run into the box then you're going to shower aren't you because he'll go down with one touch and that's fair to him so i didn't think he did much wrong i think it was kind of the right levels yeah one thing yeah, was... i would say um so not an issue of the ref but uh the um but the linesman um that was kind of like um at the Sort of like the non Gander Green half. Uh, um, when in fact he missed Rob uh, going down. Yeah. Okay, Good. sure. It was yeah. to the other side of the pitch, but like he was down for quite some time. He was rolling around and and like like mate, what, why did you not see this? Uh, mm. And like play was just all carrying on. And yeah, I was quite frustrated because like i was further away from rob milson <laughs> than he was and i could quite clearly see the guy yeah. was in some trouble yeah i think also um, on that it is a little bit sometimes because we know our players and we know which ones are likely to be yeah. rolling um had that been a certain midfielder yeah there probably wouldn't have been as much worry um mm. but because you know your players and obviously the, the refs and linos don't necessarily know that no, they just assume they assume everyone's cheating at all times um but yeah i mean both of us cancelled each other out the point doesn't it's not bad for both of us um our second clean sheet in a row yeah um and we're up to 40 so sort of well, that, i think eight? i'm more positive i mean i think i'm with with joe in that like i think that yeah going into that i was expecting i was expecting a defeat i was yeah. expecting a difficult afternoon uh, and like we made them look ordinary. Yeah, because uh, yeah. like, um, uh, uh, yeah, I was there with a friend of mine who, um, um, you yeah, know, who like I when I sort of told him that we were playing the team that were second, he was quite surprised because um, like he would he thought they had been just like two mid-table teams playing each other because he felt that like the skill set was yeah. was was quite equal. There were no moments where like oh. 
they're going to do us now. I think I think a point was I think a point was great, wasn't it? Really, I mean, sixteen times yeah. they've gone away with three points. So in it, this season, yeah. uh, you know, they they went toe to toe physically with us. They could knock it about uh, defensively. They're really strong. They got the reinforcements in as well. We were at the stage of the season now. I mean, they they had got four or five people in, didn't they? They played. Uh, they brought three on after sixty minutes, and the goalkeeper started. Uh, and they had, actually had a decent away following as well. So uh, I think there was. I think to uh, to match that and get a point was uh, was a great result. I mean, you know, not great entertainment, but it was. Uh, but it was a great result. I had a very. Um, We're now two points off the playoffs. So, yeah. yeah, I I I I very much enjoyed yesterday because I was with a mate who said, "Yeah, you lot are going to get battered." Because um, he watched this the Villa game, and he was like, <laughs> and then he's also an Arsenal fan. So we were standing there, and I was like, "So this hasn't gone very well, have you? Haven't it? You've lost to Everton, and we've we've got a point against a team who are." got two games in hand on the leaders i said i was a brilliant afternoon as far as i was concerned but i said at half time i don't i don't i don't really see a goal in this it was it was a very midfieldy game the ball just kind of went from side to side and i do i do really think that we got there were moments especially in like middle second half where we had a, a sustained pressure for a good five minutes okay, well, that, that, that didn't seem very long but we had the free kick up free quick throw in and it, i was just like yeah okay this is this is different to uh, three months ago where we wouldn't have this pressure and we just let i don't know tranmere springs to mind um that was a difficult game for other reasons and injuries but just we was we didn't wilt in the face of a team who could just easily with one goal early on we could we we could just let our heads drop so i i despite no goals i just enjoyed having i didn't feel that worry of just this could go horribly wrong at any moment and when that corner was conceded in the last minute i it's probably not a good thing but i was like no it will clear it I, and he was like, are you sure? And I was like, yeah, yeah, no, we'll clear it. And we did. And I was like, see, this is the faith you, might, you have to have, maybe. Maybe we just have to start saying, no, we're fine. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, yeah, I yeah, man, very good. Yeah. So, yeah. Excellent. All right. Well, we'll, um, we'll, we'll, we'll wrap up quickly for yesterday. And um, just before we move on, um, just want your thoughts, guys, on your one choice, because there's three, four of you, well, four of us, um, for your player of the day, so now watch me do my dance. I'm the player of the day. 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 So we'll do this opposite way around. We'll do Chris first. Okay, um, Ben, Ben Goodlow. Yeah. Excellent. And Paul. Yeah, day for the back line. I'll go with Joe. Okay, and Joe. Uh, confuse me for a second now. Oh, yeah, no, it confused me. Uh, David, <laughs> David, David was David's touch at the end of the first half, and he span away from like two defenders. Just was lovely. So I, I'll, I'll give him that. Right. Well, I'm going to go for Jack. Not necessarily, actually, because of the match, but because of his interview afterwards when he gave it, he, he gave it back to Joe Kizzy for uh, Joe last week saying that he was just doing his job after that wonder save. And this week, Jack's like, yeah, well, if he did his job, I wouldn't have to pull him out. <laughs> and I was like, I'm loving this. <laughs> Getting my popcorn out. <laughs> and I think I think Joe's come back today with touche. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to go with Jack for that reason. Um, and that, coincidental, but that leads us very nicely on to Hartlepool and our guests, um, Jack and Adam, who are from the HUFC chat podcast. Is that right? I've got that one right. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, that's correct. Excellent. Hello, and how are you guys? Buzzing after yesterday, to be fair, late. Like, it was, yeah, <laughs> Sunday yesterday, summer away day. Uh, Dan Dodds, all of us at Hartlepool United love you a bit. <laughs> it's, been, um, it's been a bit of a slog for you guys. Um, I mean, what's, what's, I know there's stuff behind the scenes, but what, what, what's, what's <laughs> breaking it down? What's gone, what's gone wrong this season? I'll let you take this one, Davo, because I normally rant a lot about it. <laughs> well, we bring in a manager um, from Scotland who should never have been brought in. No AFL experience, no credentials to be really given the job. Um, and to make matters worse, he was fully backed, which some might argue and say, well, what's wrong with that? But he was allowed to bring in about six, seven players from Scotland. Again, not good enough to be in the Football League and... I think from the minute the season kicked off, we got beat 4 0 at Walsall. And I think most Pills fans kind of got the, the vibe that it was going to be a long, long season. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, looking at the table now, that win yesterday was huge for you, really. 
because um, it pulled you back over Gillingham. Um, I mean, what is there? Ta- am I mixing up, or is is there takeover on the on the cards for you guys, or is that a different club? Um, I think it's more we wish. There, well, certain oh. <laughs> certain a uh, lot of us wish there was a takeover on the cards. Um, so there was an article that was released last week, came after a, a massive defeat to uh, Colchester in terms of significance. Came out, person <laughs> who had pulled together this article. I don't like to slate people too much, but clearly not done his research, and it basically all came out that the people um, involved were. Not the type of people that we'd want at the football club, um, which is never ideal. I think me and uh, Adam were from the off quite sceptical. We did a Twitter space after the game and, you know, we said we'll, we'll look at it and we'll, we'll see what's to be said. Um, but, you know, we're going to take it with a pinch of salt as I think you have to. You have to be so careful whether you're for the current owner, whether you're against the current owner. You don't just want anyone taking the club over. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> whether it happens in... In the coming year or whatever, hopefully it does. I think it would be needed, but um, at the minute, there's nothing concrete now. See, that's that's honestly the attitude that much, much more football fans should be having um, because I remember getting a bit of stick sort of late last season when Crawley were being taken over by the uh, crypto bros and being told that um, I was just jealous that they've now got loads of money and they're going to buy the league and all the rest of it. And it's like... you. Yeah, this, you need to know who's behind this. You can't just go, yeah, we've got new owners, that's it, it's all going to get sorted out. Um, so I, I actually think way, way more football fans should be just questioning behind, okay, you're saying where all this money's there, but show us, show us where it's coming from. It's- well, exactly. I mean, when you've got someone saying, I mean, <laughs> you read the article that came out after the game and apparently this consortium had like £215 million. They were going to inject £3 million on day one, we got a 400k striker lined up from League One. Um, what was it? An esports team as well, and that they were going to lift all banning orders um, or anything that had been in place without consulting the Cleveland police or the club. It was just going to happen. Um, and don't get me wrong, that whole thing about the banning orders, that's not going to be something I'll discuss on here because there's a lot of politics behind it. And, you know, that's not the point of it. But I mean, to come in and promise all of this straight away, like he's just kind of had to look at it and think straight away, I'm not convinced on this at all. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's Max of uh, just desperation. Please be my friend. I, love, I want everyone to love me. Um, <laughs> and you've got to wonder what, what if someone's going to invest that money, what are they getting out of it? Um, that's my very first question. What what are you getting from this? There's no, no way people are just going to do it. Just, well, very few people are going to do it just for fun. Um, I mean, even Ryan and Rob, are going to get a return on their investment at some point. Um, they're, they're, well, if they ever get out of that league, but we'll see what happens. Um, but what, what are your guys' thoughts um, on uh, apart from yesterday? Is there any other highs for the season? What 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 what's been the best part of the season so far, apart from yesterday? Transfer got window, you, Adam. It's on you. <laughs> yeah, I, I can say the transfer window. It has no. You, you laugh, but it, it, it has to be that. She got eleven in. Um, didn't you? Yeah, 11, 5 and on deadline day. Um, obviously, we were rumoured to be linked to quite a few good players, but then obviously things were just not going our way for whatever reason. We were being told that players were going to other clubs because they want to play with their mates. Players were staying at one club for whatever reason. So towards the end, it was just becoming more of a slog. But then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, we bring in 5 and 50 minutes on deadline day night. So, yeah, I've got to go deadline day for sure. How many started yesterday? <laughs> Quite a few. Uh, I think thanks. it was three. I think it was three, yeah, something like that. Oh, a lot more featured. Um, mm. You know, when it comes to highlights of the season, I think we found ourselves in the group chat saying it quite frequently that the highlights is just going to the football with your mates. Like, come three o'clock, we forget everything else because it's probably going to go downhill. But especially with away days, um, you know, just I think people, I think when you're in a situation that we're currently in, especially. You value, so like the win yesterday, like us lads were on cloud nine, talking about it afterwards, how amazing it was, what an away day it was. And I think for us, that's been like the theme of the season. We've just kind of thought, right, well, come three o'clock, probably not going to turn up. So how about just enjoy everything else about it? Um, you know, and I think that's a massive thing that football fans should definitely realise and a lot resonate with that. It's a lot about the social side and what it can do. I mean, the amount of people who've said to me this season, 
that away day or that game has, um, you know, really been an escape for 90 minutes. I think for me, that's what I take away most from this season so far. The situation we've been in has been awful. We've we've played awful football. We've not looked good at all, but I've had some of the best memories with my mates. So, you know, you just got to take take that sometimes. Yeah, I think the, the Candemonium guys who do the blog on Sutton United, they, they very frequently use the phrase, a wonderful day out spoiled by the football. Um, mm. And it's literally just that. And I think the whole lockdown thing, I know it's a couple of years ago now, but that, that made a lot of people realise, oh, yes, it is a lot more than just watching because watching it on TV wasn't the same. Yeah. I know there's the big talk about um, lifting the three o'clock um, blackout, um, but it is, it's, there's no comparison to watching live. Um, it's half time, it's the divs in the crowd shouting something yeah. that, that, make, that make the day. Um, but on to um, our away day. <laughs> so what's um, everyone's thoughts on uh, Saturday, um, are, are our Sutton fans going in with lots of optimism or are we now a little bit pessimistic that they're fighting tooth and nail for everything? Um, who wants to be brave? Paul, you go first. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's funny, isn't it? One. It really is. When we've seen, um, it's when you look at the league table and you see sides sliding down, you think, oh, they're in trouble, they're going to stay there. And then they've had a pick me up. I'm thinking of Colchester and uh, others have um, had a bit of a pep, haven't they? So I don't, I don't think it's dead and buried down there by any stretch of the imagination and that and that January transfer window is an interesting one in it last year we definitely felt the pressure of um, uh, teams bringing in new players and getting that strength and depth so um, I, I think uh, it'll be interesting playing the teams that have brought in a lot of players uh, over the next few weeks I guess the, the uh, advantage for us is that Hartlepool have brought in so many that uh, it might take a few weeks for them to gel um, but equally, you know, we've got um, we talked about it earlier, haven't we? We, uh, we uh, we've got everyone back. We've got some new players in. We're playing the probably the best we've been playing uh, this season, um, and we've got a sniff of the playoffs ourselves now. So, um, um, yeah, confident. You'd have to be confident, wouldn't you? But uh, an interesting time to to play Hartlepool. Lovely. Yeah, I'm Adam, kind of sad that I'm not. Oh, oh sorry. I was going to say, I'm kind of sad I'm not going because uh, uh, Hartlepool has always been a wonderfully friendly uh, away day, in my experience. Uh, so, uh, yeah, um, it's it's obviously a bit of a trip, uh, but it's, yeah, it, it's it's always been really lovely. And, uh, yeah, so I bet uh, I think it's going to be a little bit like um, the Gillingham games where, where particularly the one that we played um, sort of just before New Year's where, um, you know, because yeah, they too were playing, or a lot of those players were playing for their careers. Um, so I think it's going to be quite scrappy, and uh, and think yeah, if we get away with a point, then I think that would probably be okay. I think in the circumstances, obviously I would like a win, but yeah, okay. Well, in that case, we'll go with you, Joe, and we'll finish off the Sutton point of view. Um. I'm going to go with what I said earlier with this positive optimism that we love to see. Um, oh, he's conveniently bugged up his microphone. <laughs> oh, can you not? Can you hear me? Yeah, go on, go on. <laughs> um, let's say I think we, I think we'll have this. I think we, when we played them earlier this season, it was a very different side to the side that they are now. And and with the situation kind of you lot are in, then I think you, I think you could snatch it i think it could be a bit like gillingham in october when we were away it could be very 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 scrappy and one team could just take it at the death or i think if one team gets an early goal and i think if we get an early goal especially i think we could have a good day it could be a good day out but i think if if hartlepool get an early goal then i think it i think it could be a very good game i think it could be very like we'll we'll be like all right wake up let's let's go and let's try and get back into this game so i think it kind of just depends on how the match plays out i think the both teams will want it a lot because we'll, the squad will see it as a game that on stats we on and on position league position we can win but hartlepool are have just come off a big win against doncaster who we play the week after so it's the, our next run of games are all kind of just a bit they're that kind of area take teams below us but not far enough below us to be like oh we can we can beat these lot easily it's not sorry to any Rochdale fans but it's not like a Rochdale kind of match at the moment who are on an awful run but like 
yeah, I think it could be, as I said, it could be very, very tight, or it could be a very open game where defending is, let's just say, fragrant with good and lots of open defences. Jack and Adam, what are your thoughts on the game? Um, it's going to be intriguing. I, I like the point Joe made. Obviously, I went down to Sutton um, early part of the season, and it is going to be a new look Hartlepool, um, new 11, new manager. And funnily enough, one of the things I enjoyed most about yesterday, as well as the three points, was the fact for the first time this season, we can actually walk away from a game and say we watched our team play with desire. There was togetherness, there was unity, and we haven't had much opportunities this season to say that. So it's going to be an interesting time to play Sutton again. Um, I think if we played the way we did yesterday, if not better, I would fancy us. I really would. would. Yeah, I'd echo that. Um... As we've said, um, among the fan base, I think, and Adam's just touched on, the actual hunger from players and to see that players actually want to be there and actually want to fight for us. I think it always helps when you've taken over 1K on an away day when you're in the position position that you're in. To come out to see that away following must be quite something as a player. Like I know 110% as a Hartlepool fan, if I was playing for the club in front of them fans, that I'd just be flying into everything, wanting everything. So, yeah, heading into next week, there's no reason why we can't get a result at this point in time. I think probably because of the league position we're in, but I've stopped looking at the league table. Um, I just kind of like, right, next game. The thing with pulls is there's been too many times this season when we've had a false start. So we've won a game, looked really good. Next game, we've gone and been awful or bang average. So I don't want to go and say, yeah, we'll confidently go and beat you, but I'd be probably edging towards pulls at this time just because I think there'll be that confidence that has grown and, and the new lads will really bring that energy. And I also think that with some of the players that we brought in, they're challenging current players in the squad for their positioning and their position in the squad, which is only going to make them want to work harder, or it should do anyway in principle. So I think with that competition in the squad, positive result yesterday, as we say, I'd probably edge towards a pulls win. But if we get a point, we get a point. The most important question for this. Troubling Sutton fans. Um, I'm sorry, Chris, it's not the video because the videos aren't working. But um, Jack and Adam, we do need to know um, your suggestions for the best drinking place for everyone to go. It's Pub of the Week. Wow. Mike, um, Mike, Mike, what is that? Mike, what is that? <laughs> My, someone take those buttons away from him. <laughs> it was a video. Um, you're lucky. <laughs> it's brilliant. I love it. <laughs> well, in answer to your question, um, I mean, you can never go with church, wrong with Church Street where the spoons like that. You know, me and uh, me and Davo frequent that place quite often after a game, um, have something to eat and stuff, talk about the match. But that that's all right. You know, does the job. I don't really drink, so. And obviously, it's different for me because of me and Devo, but we tend to go into the corner flag um, before the game because obviously, you know, Devo's got links with them and, and the people in there, um, we know quite well. So that welcomes away supporters, I think I'm right, aren't I, Adam? Yeah, that's right. I was just about to say, it's quite funny how we are answering that uh, from the man who doesn't drink. Well, exactly, yeah. <laughs> if you want to juice this, you see, I'm representing the Sutton fans who may not want a drink. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. No, so if I go, I'm... <laughs> Well, you're more than welcome. <laughs> no, you can't go wrong with the spoons. I'd say even with the spoons, some nice pubs in Church Street. Oh, we're a lovely marina. You can head over there. It's a nice scenic place. Yeah, the marina's fantastic. Um, it's a lovely pub. There has been, if it's still there. Blank looks, so I guess it's not there. Um... <laughs> well, it depends which one you're on about. Oh, okay, right. Places now. Okay, fair enough. That's about it for this episode. Thank you for listening. Thanks to my panel of Joe, Paul, Chris, and of course Jack and Adam from the HUFC podcast. Um, Don't forget to let us know what you think. Follow us, like us, share us on all the socials at Southern Podcast. Please subscribe to the podcast on your preferred platform and that way you can make sure you stay up to date with the latest episodes. And while you're there, you can do a review as well. Next time, I will be joined by Dan and Mark Bravery. 
Um, they'll be reviewing the Hartlepool match for us and um, they'll also be giving us their thoughts on, I believe it's the second centre-back and a left-back. Obviously they've got a few more years of players to choose from so it'll be a slightly different selection I would imagine. Um, hope you've enjoyed this episode of Sutton Podcast. Thanks everyone for your time. Take care and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. United! 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 United!